Whether you're moving to a new device or just restarting with a device you already have, you want to make sure that before you wipe your device, you have all those important things on your device backed up. I'm going to show you how to back up to the cloud all of that important stuff next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So backup is, well, let's just say it's not the sexiest of topics. It's kind of an activity that I think, at least for myself, I dread because you just I just don't want to miss something really important. I think I've got everything, then I wipe everything clean, and then I go back and I realize, oh no, I forgot that one app or that one file and it's gone forever. It's not the end of the world, but still, it sucks when you make that realization. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time showing you, or at least helping you, hopefully, prepare and back up to the cloud safely, because there are a few things to consider and a few ways to do it. Google's actually made a whole lot of improvements to how it tackles this. It used to be that you'd back up certain things and it would really leave wide open holes in the, you know, the, the types of files that are being backed up, uh, the data that's associated with apps, uh, having to log into everything again. It was just, it was such a pain and it's definitely improved. It's not perfect, but I'm gonna show you how to make it just a little bit better so you fill in some of those gaps that Google might miss out on. So let's take a look on how to back up your device to prepare it for wiping it clean or moving to a different device to the cloud. That's the important key here. Let's take a look. Now, first of all, by default, most Android phones version 6.0 and up are set to automatically back up uh, most of your data to the Google Cloud. And you can find access to this by going into your settings. If you go settings, Google, and then backup, that'll get you there. Or you can go settings, system, and backup. Either way, you know, different phones are different. So either way, that's going to get you into the backup section of Android. And uh, you're going to want to toggle on backup to Google Drive if it isn't already. And actually activating this backs up a lot of your phone content. And that, of course, goes to Google Drive, your Google Drive account. These backups are encrypted with your Google account password. In some cases, even your device pin or password uh, can be used for encryption. Much of this is automatic, so it's really easy to use. And if you've backed up this device before, you'll notice that it shows here, as you can see, when you pull this up. And tapping on that backup actually shows the state of the different aspects of your device that were backed up when that backup happened. So as for now, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and kick off the backup process so that that begins. So while this kicks off here, what kind of stuff is getting backed up in this process? Uh, System-wide, a number of things with this particular tool are actually getting backed up. You've got contacts, Google Calendar events, and the settings associated there. SMS messages, though not MMS messages, so not your videos and your images. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, Wi-Fi networks and passwords, wallpapers, Gmail settings, display settings, things like like brightness and sleep, do not disturb is another aspect, uh, language and input settings, date and time, a whole host of things about your phone are being backed up with this particular uh, feature. Um, apps as well can get backed up, and that's a very important consideration. We want our apps to be intact and fully backed up, but there are some things to consider here. Google only allocates 25 megs of storage for each app that is backed up. Now, the uh, the app data that's stored on Google Drive with this backup, thankfully, does not count toward your storage limit, but it does limit developers as far as what can be backed up. And actually, not all developers support this type of backup feature. So you'll find some apps that are backed up more than other apps or some apps that like log you in and you're, you're picking up right where you left off and other apps 
it's as if you all you did is install the app on the device and you have to start from scratch again. That just really is up to developers. It's kind of part of the system. And I know that there are, Google is improving the system to make it more robust. That's where we're at right now. It's all over the map. Now, I did mention that MMS messages are not backed up with this tool. So at this stage, if that's really important to you, you want to make sure those MMS messages are backed up. I've got something that you want to take a look at. So let's dive into an app called SMS Backup and Restore. So SMS Backup and Restore is a third-party app. There is a pro version. I happen to have the pro version, so you'll pay a few dollars for that. Uh, you're going to want to install this app and then back up before you alter anything with your phone. So make sure that you have this on your device. Go ahead and launch it. Um, and then at the end, of course, you're going to restore all of this and you'll have all of your messages. But let's start with the backup portion. Uh, open the app, tap the Get Started button, and then tap to set up a backup. And here you're going to select the messages as well as the phone call history, basically everything uh, that it has access to. And you might need to grant some settings, some permissions in order to get that access, by the way. Uh, advanced settings down here allows for MMS storage. This is the reason that I'm showing it off. You want to make sure that that is on. That way you get all of that media backed up. Go ahead and select the cloud backup destination. You have a few options. In this demonstration, I'm showing off Google Drive. It ties into your Google Drive account. And make sure that you grant access to that Google Drive account so that the app only has access to files and folders created by SMS Backup and Restore. The other way, it's like, here's all of my Drive account. This way, it's just the things that matter to this app, and that's important. And with this, you kick off that backup process, and everything will be stored to your Google Drive. And we're going to come back to this a little bit later when we have the phone up and running again. A few random things that you want to take a look at before you wipe your device. Uh, photos and videos, very important. Google Photos, thankfully, is a very robust tool and service. I love it. It has a full backup feature that you're probably already using, but it's good to launch the app and go in there and just be sure that you're backed up to the latest uh, photos and videos that you've taken. If not, fire off that backup. Also, um, there are some apps that have backup inside of the app themselves. Now, the list is probably too wide for me to find each of them, but one example is WhatsApp, right? The Google approach is not going to back up WhatsApp messages, so you're going to want to go into apps like WhatsApp and be sure to check out their own individual backup functionality. So you can back that up. And then once you've got the new device all set up, go in there again and restore it. And finally, Drive, which we talked about a number of times, but this could be handy if you've got a bunch of files hanging out in a specific folder on your device. So say your downloads folder, if there's a bunch of stuff in your downloads folder, you want to make sure that hits the new device. You'll want to go into a cloud storage uh, like Drive and create a folder for it and just move your files over there. That's more of like a manual backup process, but nice to have them somewhere so that you can uh, get to them when you need to. And then finally, only when you are absolutely certain you've addressed all corners, be very certain of that, you're going to want to reset and wipe that device. So you've wiped your device and you started fresh, you restart and it kind of gets you to that, you know, kind of walk through in the beginning and uh, great. So your device, let's hope that you packed everything up, but here's, here's where we kind of get the resurrection of everything that we had before. When you're setting up a new phone, you're going to be asked automatically if you want to restore a backup from a previous phone, which you could do if you have access to that phone or an OS instance, a previous installation of Android on this device, that sort of thing. When it asks about copying apps and data, make sure, at least for the case of this uh, tutorial, select backup from the cloud, because this is all stored on the cloud right now. And in order to actually pull that backup, you're gonna have to sign into your Google account and do all that. Uh, that way it has access to the backup that you have stored there. Uh, this will uh, give the phone access to your backup directly as stored in Google Drive. Uh, and if you have a history of devices tied to your account, you're actually going to see that here. You're going to see a list of different devices in the last time that they were backed up. Make sure to select the most recent backup, the one that you just made. It could be kind of confusing, but select the one that you just made. Uh, and then within there, you're also going to see uh, apps 
call history, device settings, and you can explicitly activate and restore different apps. So you can jump into the app section and say, hey, you know what? I like all these apps except for these five. Deselect those or deselect everything and only activate the ones that you really want to move over. These apps are going to reinstall automatically for you uh, in the next few minutes. Now scan through. Be sure you're restoring exactly what you truly need. And then when you're all comfortable with that, you hit to restore. That data is going to install in the background while you complete the setup process. And then also while you begin to use your phone, depending on how many apps are restoring and how many settings are tied uh, to those apps and everything, it might take a little bit of time. Now, this system is so much better than it used to be. You're not, not too many years ago. The backup and restore process, well, I mean, at one point there was no backup process. Then it was looped in, but it was very kind of piecemeal. It, it really did not touch on all aspects of how you use your, your phone. And it was kind of hard to see, like, what exactly is going on here? I feel like I have to, you know, start from scratch anyways. They've improved it over time. Google's done a really great job with it. Um, it's not perfect, though. You're still going to have to log into a number of the apps that are reinstalled. It's not a per it's not taking the app in the condition that it was when you last used your phone and putting it right where it was. Some apps you'll find will do that. Uh, Google apps are really good at that because so much of it resides in the cloud. Other apps, you're going to start fresh. You know, game progress, for example, you might have to restart a game um, and it would be nice if the backup picked you up where you left off. That depends on how the developer has worked in their features uh, within the app to restore game progress or tie into Google Play games. That's just one example where it's probably not going to be perfect in all cases, but it is what it is. Um, and yes, your MMS messages at the end of this restore are going to be absent. So let's go back into SMS backup and restore. And this is once you have everything up and running again, just be sure that SMS back and restore is installed and you're logged into your Google account. And now you can restore those messages, including MMS. You just open the side menu, tap restore, and then find the backup that you want and restore it. Now note, it might not be the one that auto populates. It wasn't for me. I had to actually go searching for it in my drive account in the backup folder that I saved it to, to find the right one. Now you're likely going to be prompted to temporarily switch the default messaging app to SMS backup and restore away from what you normally use. This is just so that it can do its thing. Um, so don't don't be put off by the fact that you need to do that. Another note, RCS messages are not currently supported, which is a big bummer. So if you want to back up all messages for now, you're going to need to deactivate RCS going forward, which is absolutely not ideal. But, um, you know, this might still cover most of what you're looking for. And I have to imagine this is going to change over time. RCS is relatively new, so um, I'm sure they're going to they're going to tweak that and make that work. And finally, be sure to go into your actual SMS app afterwards and set it back as the default SMS app going forward uh, once the restore is complete. Now, much of this involves Google Drive, of course. We talked about it a lot. Something to consider is space limitations. Everyone has 15 gigs of free storage with their account. You can purchase more storage easily, and it's not horribly expensive either. It's sold through Google One at one.google.com slash about. $1.99 per month gets you 100 gigs of storage. $2.99 per month gives you 200 gigs of storage. So if you have a lot of photos and videos that you're backing up uh, online or you know files that you're manually moving over into your Google Drive account, this is going to help you out. And it's not much of a monthly cost. Uh, it really is worth looking into the pricing plans for Google Drive and other cloud storage services like Dropbox and stuff. They have they have service that is comparable uh, to these prices. So, you know, pick one and you can back up to that instead. All right. So as you can see, it's not perfect, but all the details are there. And more or less, you know, backup is not the kind of thing that you just want to rush through anyways. So if you follow these steps and then take a little bit of extra time in between before you hit that wipe button and, and get rid of all of your data completely, take some extra time to thumb through your apps list and just be certain. You know, there are certain apps that don't back up through Google's system or on their own. 
and you literally have to go in there and do it fully manually yourself. Make sure that you've done that because it really sucks to get rid of something and then realize you'll never get it back. So take the time to do that. Now, next week, I'm going to focus on a different aspect of backing up, and that is backing up if you have a rooted device. Not everyone has a rooted device, but it turns out when it comes to backup, that's one of the most important features that you get out of root is full system-wide backup and almost like an identical copy of the system image even if that's what you're looking for. I'm going to dive into that next week and show you what you can do if you have a rooted device and what you might be missing if you don't have a rooted device. Uh, send me your tips, tricks, your questions, all that stuff to hands on Android at twit.tv uh, and you should visit the show page. That's twit.tv slash HOA for hands on Android. There you can find all the different ways to subscribe in audio and video formats. You can link out to your podcatcher that you use on a weekly basis uh, as well as out to YouTube. If you'd like to watch the show there, that's quite all right. And there's a link to do so. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you next week on Hands on Android. Hey folks, it's Micah Sargent here, co-host of Smart Tech Today right here on twit.tv. Every single week, Matthew Casanelli and I sit down to talk about smart tech for the week. That's right. It can get kind of complicated, but there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of products to dig through. There are a lot of questions to answer, and we try to do that all every single week. From voice assistants to wearables to smart garage door openers and lights, there's so much to cover and, well, so little time. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash STT. Huh, that rhymes. 